Welcome into NFL Daily, Harrison Graham and Tom Downey. We're going to answer some of your questions on our live mailbag. Join us every Monday and Wednesday at 4 o'clock Eastern, 3 o'clock Central Time. We'll start with Lisa here. What do you think about starting Tua versus the Bills? I'm conflicted. I think you have to do it. So yeah. I'm, I'm curious what, what you're conflicted by. If I think if I am focused on the here and now and making the playoffs, I think Fitzpatrick gives me a better chance. That's the conflict. I kind of like the system that they're using where Tua is the starter and Fitzpatrick is the volatile closer. Um, in the end, I think you have to keep rolling with Tua. What I want this team to do is let him sling it more. And I yeah. know you don't have the pieces you truly want to do that on offense, Game but Grant's out just again. take your Fitzpatrick game plan and put Tua in it. Because there's a difference there in terms of the way that, that, that they play yeah. when those quarterbacks are in there. It's kind of cowardice by, by Chan Gailey. The Fitzpatrick game plan, YOLO throws when you're getting sacked by the face mask. <laughs> Next up is Pablo Sanchez, big fan of his. Hashtag NFL. Is there anything new on Josh Gordon? I was hoping he'd be able to contribute in the playoffs, obviously, for the Seahawks here. Tom. Yeah, the short answer is no. The, the, the longer answer is I don't think he's going to play this year. And it's really unfortunate. Gordon, as I'm sure you guys know, was reinstated, had some terms to meet, was on the verge of coming back, and then the NFL let everyone know, hey, he didn't meet terms of his reinstatement, allegedly had yet another relapse or had, had another uh, failed test or something along those lines. That's not good, A, for the person, of course. We're, we're more concerned about Gordon being able to stay clean as best as possible. Yep. But as it relates to Seattle and the team, it sucks. Like, Russell Wilson clearly likes him. The team likes him. They're trying to support him. They yeah. thought they were going to get another big play addition By on offense. By the way, they're still supporting him. They're keeping him on their roster, yeah. which, you know, pretty unlikely comes back this year, but maybe he returns next year. The good news for Seattle is I think in the back of their minds, they're not naive. They're like, hey, if we get this guy back, awesome. Mm -hmm. If not, we got Lockett. We got Metcalf. We didn't bank our entire season on Josh Gordon. Yeah. It's a bummer. I selfishly would have liked to see it, but like you said, for Gordon, he's got to get, he's got to figure out his life the, first. The, I mean, you're not going to play football if you can't figure it out. See Alden Smith. Took exactly. Him about five and years. look, the, not only that, the NFL rules for this are we're going to make him as we go. Yep. So there's no like, yeah, exactly. it's not like it's like a sprained ankle. He'll be back in two to three weeks. It's going to be, oh, I don't know. It depends on when the NFL is okay, cool. You, you can play. We'll again. take a look at it in Who March. Knows? Who knows? Will Josh Gordon return this season? Type Y for yes. Type N for no. I'd put it at like a 1% chance. I think it's extraordinarily unlikely. Mm. It took him, what, four months to, to review his case last time? Because what makes reasons. Us, what makes us think they're going to review it again and possibly reinstate him? I think it's pretty unlikely. Super chat from Elijah. Appreciate the five bucks, my man. Hashtag NFL. Do you think the Cowboys can beat the Bucks in the wild card if they make the playoffs? I'll give my two cents, then you can go. I think they would have a decent chance for a couple reasons. One... The Bucks have been bipolar. Some weeks they look like Super Bowl champs. The next, they can't score. Like, which Bucks team shows up? You're right. I, I still think in general the Bucks are the better of those likely oh, wild card teams. Of course. I say absolutely. A, you always bet on the uh, home playoff team that it was below 500 as what's going to be a heavy underdog. Shout out Beast Mode. Be it, be it exactly. Be it the Cowboys or Washington even the Giants. What gives me the most pause for the Cowboys, though, that's playoff Andy Dalton. Playoff Andy Dalton is bad. It always is different eventually. It is. Maybe it'll be different this Maybe time. Maybe it'll be this Andy year. Dalton. And in the end, whoever wins the NFC East, I'm betting on them to win that first playoff game. Put your money where your exactly. mouth is. Exactly. Austin's next up here. Hashtag Ooh. NFL. What do you think will happen to Matt Stafford? It's a great question. Um, for, the, for the Lions side of it, Right now, they're picking seven. Now, they might finish a bit higher or a bit lower in terms of where they actually end up drafting. But if they're picking seven, eight, or nine, they might not be in quarterback range. Yep. So a lot of this in the end will come down to who they hire to run their front office and be their head coach. Yep. If they want to enter a full rebuild phase, I think you trade them. Yep. If you're going to try and win for another two or three years, then you just stick with Max. And it's Stafford. not like he's 38. He's in his early 30s. I still think he could play at a high level for three to five more years. So they've got options. Like you said, it'll depend on the new coaching staff. Chanov, next up, what the hell does Denver do? Draft Will or Zach Wilson or Trey Lance? I'm going crazy. Locke is so inconsistent. He's not inconsistent. First off, he's you're bad. supposed to yell. He's just bad. all caps. I'm no Mitch. 
Denver, again, right now they're picking 10th, so let's say they finish around that spot. It's not going to be in Zach w Wilson range, not in no. Fields range, and probably not in Trey Lance range. So I think what Denver ends up doing in the end, and I think this is fair, because if you, you can't let this regime make another quarterback choice. You can't. You've given them too many changes already. And that's, not, that's less about Vic Fangio. Frankly, it's more about John Elway. And then on top of that, look, they got ownership issues in terms of who actually is the owner. There's, there's a legal battle going on there. So they're going to keep Elway regardless. I think if you're Denver this year, I think you roll it back and give Drew Locke one more year. Because he, he needed two plus and years Colin anyway. Sutton's back healthy next yeah. year. My ultimate conspiracy theory that I love to believe, even though there's no chance it's true, John Elway always wants to be the best quarterback in Broncos it's history. not true. So there you go. Cooper, hashtag NFL, Chargers plans, fire Anthony Lynn, draft O-line or a corner, and then what's next? Well, what's next is you figure out who your coach is. Well, I think he, yes, <laughs> I, sure. I like Brian Dable a lot. Because you can just, Herbert you can fun. take the Josh Allen offense and put it in L.A. Pretty much. Exact same thing. And you, you've got a great number one receiver in Keenan Allen. you got Mike Williams, too. Like, you can make that work in terms of, like, addressing other areas of need for L.A., you're in pretty decent shape. It might just be multiple offensive linemen that you yeah. end up taking. It may be a new receiver, too. We've got some NFL face masks available at chatsports.com slash stay safe. Solo packs all the way up to four packs. Of course, we got some player packs available as well. Tom, I want to pack NFL stadiums next season. Yeah, me too. So let's do that. Let's get a face mask. Let's wear these as, until we're told otherwise, and then hopefully we can pack our stadiums again. Chatsports.com. Slash stay safe. Like that Shout Dolphins out. One. Yeah, that's a nice Dolphins one. Shout out Bills Mafia. They're going to have 6,700 fans. Hot take. Every NFL team should have a black alternate. By the jersey. way, if you're going to be going to a Bills playoff game, you're going to have to wear one yeah. of these. Chatsports.com slash stay safe. Azakali, do you think the Bears can beat the Packers? And if so, what are the keys to victory? Take it huh. away. Just go check out my preview, youtube.com slash Bears now. I'll say a couple quick things, and then you can go check it out on our Bears only YouTube channel. Trubisky, one turnover max. Okay, I like one that. One turnover max. That's number one. And Montgomery has to be the has to be the key. He's got to go over 100 yards. Mm -hmm. You got to control some clock and set up play action because that's what's been effective with Bill Lazor. Which out of nowhere, by the way, Bill Lazor utilizing the bootleg with uh, Trubisky play action. It's mm -hmm. been really effective. Stick to what you've been doing and hope Mitchell Trubisky doesn't make the boneheaded mistake that he's been known to make in key times. Azu Sanchez. Hashtag NFL, can the Seahawks draft Sean Wade or Chris Olave? I'm a Seahawks fan and an Ohio State fan. That's pretty convenient. Uh, Olave, probably not. A, I think he's off the world at time. Seattle picks late late uh, round two. And receiver's not a huge need for them. Yep. I would have said no to Sean Wade at the beginning of this year. But Wade has not actually been that good. He moved to the outside corner. I thought he would have a great year. I thought he'd thrive there. Probably a nickel. Hasn't been the case. He might even be just an outright safety. So does, and that, he, go that's, back, does he go back to school? Uh, maybe, actually. That's actually not a bad idea for Sean Wade. So I don't th even if he goes pro, I don't think he gets there in, in round two. But of those two guys, as weird as this is, I think Wade's more likely to actually be there. Interesting. We'll stick with some more Seahawks questions here. Richard Hamilton, do the Seahawks have a good enough defense to make the Super Bowl? Provided that the offense gets back on track, absolutely. This defense for the Seahawks has been much better over the past month and a half or so. Do I think they're the best in the NFL like Jamal Adams said? No, I don't think that's the case. But this defense is playing well enough to win a title. And there is one big but involved here, too. But it's come against lesser competition. True. So if they play the way they've been playing against teams like the Bucks and the Cardinals in terms of bad offenses, against the Packers, yeah, they can absolutely get there. Which team, which style of offense do you think in the NFC gives them the biggest trouble? I'm going to go Green Bay. Uh, their run defense is actually pretty solid. Where the Seahawks can get into trouble is dynamic aerial attacks because, A, they're banged up at corner. The defense line has been a bit inconsistent this year. And if you're Jordan Brooks has been a great run stopper, but he's not good in coverage, I think Green Bay would be your biggest concern. Get subscribed to our Seahawks channel. It's youtube.com slash Seahawks TV. we got videos going up over there almost every single day. More in-depth conversation on the Seattle Seahawks. Izzy World next up on our NFL mailbag. Who has been a disappointing rookie? Good question. I think in general, we're a little quick to like say, oh, this guy's a bust. Now, sometimes pretty obvious with Dwayne Haskins. Um, 
<laughs> Look, I think Jeffrey Okuda has been a disappointment. Like, if you yeah. want to go early pick, How about got, got hurt, one interception, got burnt a lot. Henry, both Raiders picks. Henry Ruggs, and part of that is scheme for Ruggs. But, Damon I mean, Arnett. Damon Arnett has kind of struggled in year one. Pick. He was a second-round corner, and they took him in the first round. Yeah, Andrew Thomas hasn't been a disaster for the Giants. Okay. But compared to the other rookie tackles taken near him, Tristan Wirfs, Mekhi Becton, Jedrick Wills, I think he's been the worst of that group. That's a bit of a disappointment. You know, Jordan Love hasn't played, but that was kind of expected. And then I think Caleb on chase on. It's partially, again, the Jags aren't using him very well. He's got, I think, one sack this year. That's a bit of what a disappointment. What about the Niners? Who's the DT the Niners selected? Kinlaw. He's been a little inconsistent. Up and down. Uh, up and down. He's maybe been a bit of a disappointment, too. I think you were hoping for more, especially statistical production out of him. But... Okay, you know, and now it's that, been great for them, though. You know, Patrick Queen and Isaiah Simmons have struggled year one in coverage, but that's life as a linebacker. It's tough. A couple more here. Andrew England, what would it take for the Browns to be the best team in the league? Your quarterback gets a lot better. <laughs> yeah. And, yeah. That, and that's, that's not even a dig at Baker Mayfield. It's that's, just the gap between Mayfield and, like, let's go, you know, Mahomes, Mahomes and Rodgers. And Rodgers. And even, like, Allen is significantly better than Mayfield at this point. Mayfield's good. Could you win a Super Bowl with Mayfield? Yes. Maybe, but you better have like the best roster in the league around them, which they don't. They have a good roster, mm -hmm. not a great one. They're secondary a help too. Playoff caliber team, not a Super Bowl caliber team right now. Brennan, 2026. Do you think the Steelers will sign Haskins after the football team cut him? Well, I'll say this, Brennan. We put a video out on mm -hmm. Dwayne Haskins' destinations. I, we don't expect him to sign this year because Week 17 is here, but. Pittsburgh might have been on that list. Go check it out. Just subscribe to the channel and go look at our recent videos. It's going to be like our third most recent mm -hmm. video. Troy Daniels draft or does Joe Bro, excuse me, still got considerations for rookie of the year? Or do you see CeeDee Lamb as the front runner? Uh, ne it's neither. It's, uh, yeah, it's, it's Justin Herbert, it's and it's not even close. Justin Herbert will win the award. He's been the most healthy. Burrow's injury kind of killed it for him. To it in play early enough. I think enough. Herbert was passing and, Burrow and, anyway. And look, I, I, CeeDee Lamb's been great. He's going to be an awesome receiver in the NFL. Right? No doubts about that. He hasn't even been the best rookie receiver. Justin look, Jefferson. This, has been a, this is a statistical award. We know that. It's Justin Jefferson. He got almost, almost got 1,300 yards. Yeah. He would win it over CeeDee Lamb. Gary Sanderson, you get the final word unless we get a super chat in the next 20 seconds. Possible Jags candidates for me, Wink is the top guy. It means Don Martindale, Don Wink Martindale, the Ravens defensive coordinator. It does make some sense because the guy that Martindale said, oh, I'm going to go hire this guy. And first off, Martindale leaked this last year too of, I'm just going to get the best assistance. And then didn't happen, and none of the assistants actually went to the way he said they were going to go. But he said he would bring Tony Elliott. The, the Clemson OC with Trevor Lawrence. To me, I don't hate that idea, actually. To me, this is hire the guy you think can maximize Trevor Lawrence the best. Nothing else matters. That's who you hire if you're Jacksonville because you're going to draft Lawrence. Which guy gives him the best chance to be successful? If that's uh, Don Martindale, fine, but I feel like there's probably some better options out there.